Who wants to study rates of reactions? Well, you do, of course. And look, all scientists all over the world need to know rates of reactions from the industrial guys who are saying, well, all right, how much Tylenol is coming down the conveyor belt at any one time being produced, manufactured in the plant? Well, there's a certain rate of reaction that needs to be studied so they can maximize how much they can bottle every day. Rates are important in chemistry to be able to determine. And, and that's part of well, how molecules react together, their kinetics. So, chemical kinetics deals with the rate of reactions. Now, let's take, for instance, a certain equation, and let's, let's elaborate on what we're talking about in terms of rates. Uh, the decomposition of carbon dioxide into carbon monoxide and oxygen goes according to this balanced equation, 2, 2, 1. Okay, now, let's say we start off with a quantity of CO2 and we have to turn it into CO and O2. Now, how's that going to look graphically represented? Well, if we graph concentration versus time, the carbon dioxide is going to decrease in concentration over a given time, and the carbon dioxide is going to increase, and so is the O2. But the O2, balanced in a 1 to 2 ratio, isn't going to increase as much as the CO, correct? That makes sense. Okay, now, what's the rate of this being lost and these two chemicals being gained. Well, the rate can be established by taking the change in the concentration of the quantity of CO2 over time. How many moles per liter, let's say concentration is measured, and how many moles per liter is it losing per unit time? Moles per liter per second. That would be a rate. So just dividing concentration by time gives us a rate. Now here's the thing though. If this was a straight line, straight down like this, it would be easy to be able to calculate the rate because for the straight line, we just take two points on the y and two points from the x axis and then take the difference between the two. Rise over run is going to be able to give you the slope of the line and that will be in the unit moles per liter per second or how much CO2 we'd be losing. But it's not a straight line, it's a curve. So how do we figure out how many moles per liter per second that this is losing? Well, we can't do that necessarily right away straight off for a curve here. We can do it for any particular one point in time. That's possible. You know, if you say, well, right, right there, I want to be able to determine what the instantaneous rate is there. Well, then you draw a line that is tangent to the curve. Do you remember doing that? And then for that line there, get the slope of that line, two points on the y and two points on the x, subtract the y's from each other, the x's from each other, and you've got then the slope of that line and you'll get the instantaneous rate at that point. Okay, that's how you figure that out. Here's what we're interested in chemical kinetics in what I'm going to show you and what most university textbooks will show you too. We're going to be interested in the rate of decomposition of the reactant only. We're not going to be worried about the products because actually, you know, the products can actually reform the reactants again and mess us all up too. And we don't even want to consider that at the moment. So it's going to be, the rate is going to be the change in the concentration here of the CO2 over the change in time. That gives us our rate. But we're going to take this and we're going to turn it into a little bit of a calculus type of thing and be able to write something called the rate law which will explain to us a lot better, a little bit better than this here, on how the rates of decomposition are going to be actually shown. Now more accurately that last equation we can call the rate of it equal to the change in concentration of CO2 over the change in time but we know that the CO2, because it's a reactant, is losing an amount, so it's going to actually reduce its concentration. We put a negative in front of this negative quantity, because it's being reduced, to make a positive rate, because we want our rate to be a positive number. Okay, now, there's another way that scientists would rather be able to manipulate this, to be able to come up with some idea as to how the concentration of this reactant affects the rate. For instance, if you had more CO2 in the container initially, do you think you'd have more collisions 
to be able to produce product faster? Well, actually, that's probably something that can happen. So we rearrange this formula to come up with something called a rate law. And the rate law is always written this way. You write rate equals, and then you write k, which is a rate constant. You don't know what it is yet, but that's what you write. So rate equals k is something that you always write. And then you write the concentration of, because these are concentration brackets, the concentration of that reactant, CO2. But you know how that there was a 2 in front of that CO2. That comes nowhere into this. You don't even care about that. But you put an N up here because this is called the order of the reactant. And this is something that we spend almost all of our time trying to find. If we know a rate of reaction, and we know a concentration of CO2 and what order it reacts to, we can calculate a rate constant, and then the doors open up for being able to tell how fast a certain reaction will go when we have any type of concentration of reactant. Now, here's something I'll explain about that. If this number was the number 1, then if we doubled a concentration of CO2 in that last reaction, it would end up doubling the rate. Because if this, is, if this is doubled to the power of 1, we just get a doubling occur. Rate constant K stays the same no matter what it is, whatever it is. So a doubling of this makes a doubling of that. And so, when you see that the concentration of a reactant doubles, and it doubles the rate of reaction, we call that a first order. But you know what? What happens if you're observing a reaction, you double the concentration of the reactant, but this goes up four times as much. The rate speeds up four times as much by doubling. Then this n was actually squared because if you doubled it times two and then squared it, you'd actually get two squared, which is an increase in the rate of four times. Well, that's interesting. So this rate law, also called a differential rate law, we can actually figure out from information given in the chart, like this.